Good morning. How are you? I'm very well. How are you? I'm doing just fine. Thank you. <laughs> Good. I need to fix my light and my room here because I had to plug in. I'll be right back. Susan, we can just see your eyes. There you go. Glad to hear that your eye appointment went well yesterday. You're, you're mute. Hi, Gary. <laughs> I just want to say hello to you. <laughs> it was, I was much relieved. I bet you were. Yeah. I didn't realize that they had different levels of liquid, the stuff they dil uh, dilate your eyes with. There are different strengths that they can use. Oh. So they use the least, you know, the, the weakest on me, which was great because it, it doesn't, it's not as, it doesn't last as, you know, as right much as long. I mean, it, it wasn't really clear until maybe six last night, but I, it, all of a sudden, like after a few hours, I could tell that things had, you know, were, were better. It was interesting. Good. I was fascinated by that stuff. <laughs> it was just weird to be out driving and doing something normal. Right. <laughs> how are the goats doing? Say, say. I said, how are the goats doing? They're doing well. Last night, the kids were out there, or Olivia was out there visiting them. And when she left, they squawked like crazy. They did not like oh, being left. They really like people out there playing around with them. <laughs> they put a um, uh, a slide in there for them, which apparently is hysterical. <laughs> 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 and we have honeysuckle in the back. Oh my goodness, they've devoured that rapidly. They, they clearly like that. Yeah, yeah, they're funny, hungry little guys. They've grown too. We can see, oh look, now we can see Dina adjusting and. Getting ready. Yep. Normally, I, this is sitting on the table you normally see behind me, so. Yeah. But I had to plug in and I've moved furniture back to where it belongs in the house, so <laughs> the thing I normally would put the, anyway. We're regrouping, good morning. Good morning. Let's do so we'll still see behind you, it'll just be a different perspective. Yeah. Absolutely, you'll see out into the yard, sort of. It's and you'll see uh, my grandmother's china, maybe. Good morning, everyone. It is good to be together. And here we go. What I should do, I have these beautiful flowers right in front of me. I always like you to have something oh, sure. lovely to look at. So I'll put them behind me. I'm, you're being taken away from me. All right. I'm going to turn this light off completely so I don't have a halo. <laughs> ah. <laughs> And that, my friends, is how you get a halo. All right, it is really good. Now I'm in the dark, how it's very moody. Uh, good morning, it is good to be together on this Wednesday. It's Wednesday, right? And, um, oh, all of this is recorded, how wonderful. So um, I meant to stop recording, I was trying to get to coffee. Um, so it's Wednesday, the 10th of June, I do believe, and it is time for morning prayer. Oh, there's the clock. See, it's time for morning prayer. All right. Let me just clean up our view a little bit and make it a little bit bigger. How's that, <laughs> folks? Good. Is that good? Good. It's good. But I invite you to uh, mute yourself unless we are doing one of the responses and you can either do that muted or you can unmute yourself. It's up to you. And uh, we've got three readings to read today, our gospel reflection, our epistle reflection, and then our text from Matthew 9 that we will look at together. Who would like to do the gospel reflection this morning? Mm, I will. All right. Was that, who was that? Mark. Mark? Mark. Great. And then, good morning. And then the epistle reflection will be? Martha. Martha. Thank you, Martha. And then our text from Matthew 9. Who would like to read that? It's got all kinds of fun words like Alpheus, Thaddeus, and the Canaanian. I can do that. Thank you. Excellent, Carolyn. And that'll take us to the end. 
All right, our theme this morning, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Make full use of the present opportunity. Give thanks every day for everything. Gospel reflection. We cannot serve God and money. We cannot be slave to two masters. So we shall enter by the narrow gate. The gate is wide that leads to perdition, and many go that way. For the gate to life is small, the road is narrow, and those who find it are few. If we want to be with Jesus, we must forget ourselves, carry our cross, and follow. If we want to save our life, we will lose it. But if we lose our life for Christ and for the gospel, we will save it. With us, it is impossible. But not for God. But not for God. Only God can save us. Epistle reflection. In everything we do, in our troubles, difficulties, and hardships, we show we are God's servants by purity, patience, and kindness, by the spirit and by our love and by our message of truth. We show ourselves for what we are. We may seem poor, but we make many rich. We seem to have nothing, but we possess all that there is to have. reading from Matthew. Jesus went about all the cities and villages, teaching in their synagogues, and proclaiming the good news of the kingdom, and curing every disease and every sickness. When he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them, because they were harassed and helpless, like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. Then Jesus summoned his 12 disciples and gave them authority over unclean spirits to cast them out and to cure every disease and every sickness. These are the names of the 12 apostles. First, Simon, also known as Peter, and his brother Andrew, James, the son of Zebedee, and his brother John, Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew, the tax collector, James, son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon the Cananean, and Judas Iscariot, the one who betrayed him. These 12 Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Go nowhere among the Gentiles and enter no town of the Samaritans, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. As you go, proclaim the good news. The kingdom of heaven has come near. Cure the sick, raise the dead, cleanse the lepers, cast out demons. You received without payment, give without payment. Here ends the reading. Thank you, Carolyn, for reading. I want to be honest with you that I've picked this text because it is the text for Sunday, and, um, and it's a troubling text, and I thought we could study it together, and that might help me as I struggle with it towards Sunday's sermon. Um, and it's also very nice to be in conversation around a text rather than just in conversation with my own mind and a couple of scholarly books. So what jumps out for you this morning in this text from Matthew 9, where Jesus is out and about doing his ministry, and then he sends these disciples, who we have a historical record of their names here, out into the world. What jumps out to you? What jumps out to me is that I don't understand why he says, enter no town of the Samaritans. Okay. When he, saw the crowds, he, had, he, was, ahead. when he saw the crowds, he had compassion for them because they were harassed and helpless. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I like the, uh, where you say the kingdom of heaven has come near. For me, what jumps out is raise the dead. Like, are you kidding me? These guys he just named are raising the dead? Or he thinks they should, but that, that just jumps out at me. I like you received without payment, give without payment. Mm -hmm. The specificity of his instructions 
go nowhere among Gentiles and enter no town among Samaritans. Yeah, it is very specific. That is very specific. True. And we're back among, just among the house of Israel, not for Gentiles again. And this was a, we discussed this a couple of days ago, I think, how that's so odd. Mm -hmm. I find the whole sentence, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Therefore, ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. It's mm -hmm. a mouthful. It is a mouthful. I've had that feeling, have you? You've been, you looked around your home or wherever you were in your workplace, and you're like, where is everybody? Why am uh -huh. I the only one here cleaning the floor? Why am I the, uh -huh. you know, the harvest is plentiful, but the laborers are few. That's your verse to quote. When you look around and you're the only one, you know, putting your back into it, right? So mm -hmm. I think we certainly understand the concept and then the next part is the part that goes beyond my human understanding. Therefore, okay. ask the Lord of the harvest to send out laborers into his harvest. It's his harvest, not mine. It's his work. This might be a stretch. Um, the harvest is plentiful. The laborers are few. We don't have enough of us yet to reach everyone. Yeah. So you yeah. tell, let's go. We'll start with the house of Israel. We'll, and then maybe later there's a place where they can catch up with the Gentiles and the Samaritans. Yep. Yeah, I'm not sure if this is really an exclusionary mission or if it's about, or if it's just focused. You know, I mean, I think we could, it could be very exclusive and exclusionary or it could be focused. And I'm really, I'm so glad we've been studying Matthew. Dina, could it be a, an, an item of the House of Israel be an area of, uh, an item of priority where there's a lot of pain and suffering? And to Carolyn's point, um, start there and and um, back to the last point. You receive without payment, give without payment, and um, and if you create more believers there, then others will follow. Back to mm -hmm. you have to look at that exclusivity in the context of the community that Matthew's writing to. He's writing to a community of Jewish Christians in Antioch, uh, and they're they're you know. They're wondering about what their relationship is with the Gentile community, with Samaritans, with others. They're still thinking that they're the special ones. They're God's chosen people. And so Matthew's just reinforcing that. You know, I, I, I don't think it's an overarching mm -hmm. uh, you know, commandment forever and all time. It's, it's context sensitive. Hmm. And yet, in earlier chapters, you know, he heals the centurion's servant or slave. I mean, there's moments where he goes out beyond a little bit more. So it seems in Matthew, um, so far, he goes out a little bit beyond the Jewish community, but really kind of gravitates back pretty quickly. Whereas in some of the other Gospels, like Luke, he kind of stays out on the edge a lot. Uh, Pixner, uh, Marjorie Pixner, in his uh, book about Jesus's Galilean ministry, suggests that there is an evolution in Jesus's perception of his work and ministry. That uh, you know he crosses the Sea of Galilee specifically into Gentile territory. He's rejected there uh, by uh, the Gerasenes. Comes back to uh, the other side of the lake. Eventually makes a second trip over there. Is better received. And, and so Pixner thinks that over the time that Jesus is ministering, he begins to see that, that his call is, uh, is broader, that God's reach is broader than just to uh, the house of Israel. So that in and of itself is probably an interesting concept for a lot of us to just ponder today, which is over his ministry, did Jesus learn and grow and develop like human beings learn and grow and develop? Or because he was also fully divine, did he know from moment one what the unfolding would be and in what order? And I think that's, you know, does God change and can God change God's mind? This is something that people puzzle over. <clears throat> we pray or sing a hymn to the unchangeable God um, or unchanging. Um, I just think it's kind of interesting to think about Jesus developing over time like that. Very cool. And maybe I'm developing his understanding of who his mission is for. Very cool. It feels to me like he's trying to um, 
help the apostles learn more and get stronger in their ability to go out and talk and speak and, and draw people in. You just don't go scattered to everybody, but you there's a time of learning, which may be a reflection of what he as human realized as humans would need to do because they wouldn't have, you know, Interesting. When you have a vestry retreat and you say to a vestry, who's our audience? Who are we trying to reach in our community? Somebody will be offended and say, everybody. We want to reach everybody. And you say, okay, but with limited resources, what are we, you know what I mean? Like, so this is really an interesting text because it's, it's focusing on a particular mission field, right? Instead of everybody. In a way, Dina. What's that? It seems like community organizing in a way. It is community. Well, the, the text goes on. We have the option to continue for several more verses, which say, take nothing for your journey. So not only, you know, how do you go and what do you do when you get there, but also take nothing for your journey. Um, be clever as uh, snakes or serpents and gentle as doves. I love that line, clever and gentle. Um, it goes on to tell more about how they go out into the world. Well, thank you for this rich discussion. I want to um, give one more moment for anyone who hasn't shared anything yet to get a word in, if you want. Any observations or things that jump out? I was just thinking about how it would be to be on the receiving end of that information and to suddenly get this information, to suddenly get this instruction to be able to go out and raise the dead and cure the sick and do all of that. Like what a like kind of like that's kind of like ca getting called up to the big leagues or something and uh, mm -hmm. yeah imagine what that would be like right do you think mike that they thought this would happen hmm. yeah i was wondering like is this a shock to them or is this like oh right. finally finally he's putting us in put us in coach jesus summoned his 12 disciples like when they got that summoned to the principal's office were they worried were they excited <laughs> yeah how would you like to be poor Thaddeus, who is mentioned one time, I think, in all four Gospels? Yeah. <laughs> it's a good name. At the Anyone end there, else want to share that hasn't shared? Where we're talking about curing the sick and raising the dead uh, makes me think back to my working days. We've always, always wanted to have a boss who fully empowered, empowered me to do the work. Mm. And uh, Dina, you said, you know, raise, raise the dead, you know, how big is that? Do we have, <clears throat> is there much written about the success of the apostles in doing these jobs? Mm. Yeah, I think they come back and feel pretty good about it. Let me see. Let's find out. Any other comments while I look it up? I'm with Bill. It made me curious to know how they each responded to this, to know more about their ministries. Yeah, it's pretty heady stuff if you go out there mm -hmm. and uh, cure somebody who's, who's sick. <laughs> Not to mention raise the dead. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying to uh, understand the kingdom of heaven has come near. Yep. Is that possibly alluding to Jesus going to heaven? Yeah, so the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, these phrases are either Jesus declaring that the shalom, the reign of God, is coming over the world and breaking in, or it might be about the afterlife, or it might be, you know, God's way, I think probably more the first, God's way, God's shalom is um, has landed and has been released on the world or unleashed on the world in a new way if you will um, and so he's proclaiming that this power of god's shalom has broken into the world in him that he is the one releasing it into the world if you will that's how i read it there are other ways to read it I think it's the last line is also very interesting. You've received without payment, give without payment. Hmm. Really about sharing. 
Yeah. The, the whole chapter 10 continues with instructions for these guys. Do this, do this. We're going to be hard on you. Um, a disciple is not above the teacher. A lot, a lot of teachings. And in one of the gospels, they return with success and, uh, and they complain that other people are, are healing in Jesus's name. But I'm not sure if that's in Matthew or not. So I'm looking for it. Um, and then doesn't really, let's see, woe to you. I don't really see their return in Matthew's gospel. I'll have to study that uh, a little bit more and read on, but I got to chapter 13 and did not see a return yet. So all of chapter 10, which we've just introduced in this text, is tons of instructions about how they're to go out in the world. It's, a, it's like a, a guidebook for them, right? Were there occasions prior to this when the... Uh disciples requested an opportunity to serve in a stronger manner. They were seeking more, quote, power, if you will. Yeah. I don't know. I have to go back and look. In Matthew's gospel, I'm not sure. Maybe in another gospel before this moment, they want more authority. You know, up until this point, people are just starting to figure out the kind of authority that Jesus has in Matthew. So now he's dispersing or distributing his authority to his followers pretty quickly. Um, which I, I, you know, part of me wants to assume that it works. If Jesus sends them out to do these things, that it, that it happens, right? So, and then you can imagine why the leaders get so nervous and worried about Jesus if he's sending these people out and people are starting to follow the followers, it becomes really a movement, right? I bet it's uneven. I bet, bet some of them really grasp it and, and do really well with it. I bet yeah. some others are, are kind of like, uh, leave, out, demon, uh, uh, out, out, demon. And uh, it might still work. Who knows? Because yeah. it's not about them. Right. Who knows? Who knows? Who knows? Good. Well, this is, a, this is a fun text because, you know, we're called to follow Jesus and we're called to be apostles being sent out. Yeah. Um, and we're in this moment, we're still, even though people are exhausted by it, we are still in a global pandemic. And the first thing on the list is cure the sick. Mm. You know, and that is often, that's why so many hospitals mm. were founded by the church um, throughout the ages, because the first command here is cure the sick. Pretty wild. Um, you know, not tell everybody they're, they're living lives of sin, which the church also can make a focus. Yes. So <clears throat> a very rich text for us this morning. Let's continue on with our prayers. If you'll say with me the first three lines. Our Father, our Father your will, will be done, done. On, on earth, earth as, it as it is in heaven. In heaven. What prayer request would you like to share this morning? My friend Brian, who's recovering from surgery. For my boss's brother, who fell off a roof and broke his neck. Mm. Cool. For Abby, as she continues recuperating from her surgery. For Ed. And Marion and Hamna, who have tested positive. Mm. For Dennis, Grayson, and Regina. For members of our parish family whom we don't get to see. Connie, Mark, and Luke. For Cindy. For people who are actively protesting and um, wanting to sustain their energy and for all those who are struggling. And what thanksgivings do we offer today, either silently or aloud? Family and friends. For St. Andrew's family. For this day. For the opportunity to study with the College of Congregational Development this afternoon and tomorrow.
for the staff of St. Andrews who is so faithfully adapting and willing to do new things and try new things for the community. The leadership of Claggett. Yes. Creator of the universe, infinite and glorious, you give us laws to save us from our folly. Give us eyes to see your plan unfolding, your purpose emerging as the world is made. Give us courage to follow the truth, courage to go wherever you lead. Then we shall know blessing beyond our dreams. Then will your will be done. Almighty and everlasting God, we thank you that you have brought us safely to the beginning of this day. Keep us from falling into sin or running into danger and guide us to do always what is right in your eyes. Holy and enabling spirit, give wings to our morning prayers. May those we support and cherish with our love receive your grace to help them in their need. Amen. Amen. Amen.